true. For LAG, this has been the best breaking team pretty much in the game, but they're one of the worst teams when it comes to rotation and holds J, and that's kind of a staple across Invasion Hardpoint. They have to have something better today. Especially on Invasion, like you said, my friend, because you know we're playing on pre-patch. So we're going to have Treehouse, which is going to be P4, and back towards the Palace, which is P5 of Money Hill. So if you're that team in LAG who rely on breaks every single time to find success in hard points on a map like Invasion, that's going to come back to bite you. But here we go into the map number one. They are going to be the team starting off on the good side. So how much time can they get off this P1? Little double SMG focus over to the side hallways. They've been able to open things up for first blood and a second. No trades anywhere to be found. And well, <laughs> you want to talk about hold percentages. LAG in first. Don't even find a single kill. Yeah, that's not good. That's not the way you want to come out swinging. And now you allow Lin to take a little bit more pressure up the mat towards courtyard. You're potentially going to try to trap them in towards back palace. You have one player in fame who already spawns over towards mannequin. So the pitch is going to be here. Be down now for LAG. The break is in. All right, we're back in. We've got ourselves a ball game. <laughs> really good start for Minnesota, but LAG continuing to showcase those statistics. Very clean on their break attempt. Looking over towards P2, focus will be to the top left side of the map as that lock will start to open up. LAG should get here first. Lin's trying to deter that. Good first blood win, but right from behind, Diamond Khan keeps the rotation safe. Yeah, Diamond Khan, he's been the player so far for LAG that I love to watch. He's always putting himself in a great position to make the right play happen or make the clutch kills happen, and he finds one to win the rotation for his team and now even though they are controlling the spawns the way that they do currently they eventually want to flip minnesota towards the back side of palace so they can try to chain it towards p3 but that's already 20 uncontested seconds they're still holding strong now spawns are starting to flip yeah, things looking decent for minnesota with that split spawn situation assault the last one standing over towards the back side near ice cream the rest of his team trying to flood right down the main street they've been only able to take down one and the team kill will actually allow the break to come through pretty cleanly here for Minnesota. So back and forth, we kind of went over the top of the second hard point, but for the last 20 seconds, things are looking pretty good for Minnesota. Last attempt for fame would have to be the linchpin towards success and breaking, and he will not be able to do so. Minnesota, a chance to reclaim the lead. Yeah, Minnesota's going to take the lead, and there's also a big up by going away over towards the next hill as well. Accuracy was nice and early off the rotation, but he loses that gunfight to Estrio, so he tried to be the player to sneak on out, make something happen for Minnesota, but now they are trapped in towards back palace next fall this player pushed up is going to be vivid he's working his way through dvd but he gets cut down so now if you are the gorillas you can take a deep breath no one's going to be near the hill for about 10 seconds let's just make sure we watch our crosses really good buffer set around this hard point a lot of stress on assault to watch the main street diamond Con catching the cross everything turning up pretty nicely here for lag full four man feed and this would be a time where lag try to extend that line a little bit further defensively and really put the pressure on minnesota spawns and this is where it gets scary too because now with only 30 seconds left minnesota they know that if they apply pressure over towards bathrooms they're definitely going to lose treehouse we now have to give up 30 seconds and try to rotate over towards the opposite side of the map but again diamond Con in the position already at 10 and 5 on a three streak Gonna be perfectly set up to give themselves a nice little lead. If you're a Minnesota Rocker, if you don't find a break here, you're gonna be forced to chalk this pretty early oh, yeah. and play for a full 60 at Palace. And it's gonna feel desperate in nature if you let this extra 60, even 45, go away just by the total score on the board right now. Diamond Con up top, still keeping his streak alive for four, but Awakening able to shut him down. Six and five start for Awakening. That's been pretty solid. You talked about the tempo of the Minnesota ARs, but accuracy is still kind of lagging behind a little bit. Only three and eight, only a second of the hard point as well. We need to see these ARs from Minnesota start to light things up. Yeah, they definitely have to step up, and at least they have the bodies here to apply the pressure and find the break in towards Treehouse. Now their main focus is maintaining Palace side. Fame with a big one-on-one -on -one towards the middle of the map. He's going to start it off. He can find this second. That would have been enough to potentially flip the spawns, but big kill from Vivid. They're getting the final 30. You're going to have accuracy already off the rotation towards Palace side. Wow. This is exactly how you want to get back into the game as LG looking like they're going to find a couple kills to lead towards this break. Yeah, but Linz is still underway. <laughs> really well done. Again, he's been kind of the shining part of this Minnesota team, even in their most desperate and sometimes bad moments. He's able to at least allow a little bit more of that scrap time to come through. Battle uh -oh. for rotation over to the final hard point. Estriel, Vivid, 1v1. They're going to see, well, actually not see each other, but Estriel, oh! oh, he turns back over. Gets the kill on towards Vivid. The rest of LAG still spawn all the way out, but there is still a chance for Estriel to finesse his life. Yeah, it's only Estriel Hill, though. So he has to basically go Superman. Dun -dun -dun -dun, strap on the cape. All of your teammates <laughs> trying to run through the middle of the map while the rest of Minnesota trying to snip out where you are, but he's finding openings. He's finding a kill to allow his teammates to push Bro. him towards the street side. He's finessing. He's dancing towards the bottom of the palace. Can we shoot him? No, we cannot. He finds another. Estrio on a five, still finessing. 
And here comes the rest of LAG finally here. Last one left alive for Minnesota's accuracy. And he's just stuck, or running awakening. He's just stuck inside the hard point at the moment. Estrell on five, slides across, catches the info. There's the bait and switch. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. And how about that for LAG? A nice little break with still 20 seconds to go. Minnesota gonna try to give this one last hit with two members still nearby. Accuracy wins, working together. And there's accuracy for the double to get the scrap time, keeping us neck and neck as we rotate back over to the first hill. Yeah, that's such a well-played hill right there to Estrew because that score line could be completely different if he drops and then you allow Minnesota to get a full-on setup and he keeps it a little bit scary, a little shaky. And now they're still up by 15 points, but into the second rotation of hard points we go. It's gonna be Rocker in full control of the hill currently. But you do have those close ones for the gorillas towards Panic inside. You just have to find a couple kills and they have yet to find one. Vivid and Assault holding it down so far. Nice little lane here from Linz, trying to open things up around the outside of the hard point. They've been able to at least use that damage as a way to confirm one kill. Accuracy following up, but ah, oh, LAG could have once again find a way to break at a perfect time to see if they can hold this out as we had to an LAG listen it. Nothing dark, nothing dark. I'm gonna put your back door cuts up. Okay, go for it. I ain't new. Back door, I have a streak. Back door on me. I'm trying to live. I don't feel from me cut. What's the other thing? I'm new. I'm a bullet. I'm here. I'm here. Might spawn out. Might spawn out. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to play. He's telling you left. I have a streak. I have a streak. They're all going. Was it new? I'm playing the second he's on me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enemy new, dark, 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 enemy new, watch out. On old, on old. Just kill the old. He was behind us, he was behind us. He shot the, I have the mid door, I have the mid door. Let's square him, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna retreat, break me too. New, absolutely. I got toxin. There's two, two on me. I have the first choice, I'm shrinking. They're all shit late too, but they can throw it down late. One square, they're all there. One vending, one palace. I'm first shot, don't shoot late. He's this square, he's square. I'm first shot, he's square. Oh, he's deep. He's deep, he's deep. Palace. Jesus. He's not pitching. Come on, speak to not pitching, man. Not pitching, man. Trace, trace, trace. 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 Trace, trace, Spawn next, spawn next, spawn next, spawn next. I'm on parallel. Yeah, I'm on parallel. 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 I'm on
Minnesota, they were the better team at rotating. They were the better team at holding down hills. They just were not the better team at breaking. And on a map like Invasion, when you're not that team set up early, it's really difficult to break some of these hills. And that was on full display in map number one. Minnesota, they turned the game around when they got to that P2. Get a full 45 there, flip the spawns towards, towards the backside, towards Palace. Then you take bathrooms control. You get to about 190. But the fact that they fought that final 15, that was even better for them because they know all of the gorillas are going to spawn towards Palace. They have to sprint down B Street, take us out of this heady. As long as no one scams in towards the hard point, we should be able to close the game out on four. And they did it flawlessly in the final three hard points to close out this game and go up 1-0 in this series. Jay, Vivid goes 23 and 19, 4K plus damage, minute 20 in the hill, and 19 of his 23 go untraded. Woo. This guy was a problem, which is, yeah, we were, you know, not surprising. It's just we usually see those numbers from Lynn. So yeah. the fact that you're getting out of Vivid, good news for Minnesota. Yeah, that's definitely good news out of, uh, out of Minnesota because Lynn, he's been that guy. But if you can get Vivid to step up the way that we know he can play, it's going to make the, lot, the game a lot easier. And it was also like, what, after he started like 3 and 10, he started to slowly win a couple of gun fights to win his team a couple rotations and that also made the game a lot easier it looked like they were a little bit late to the warm-up but eventually they showed up to the party and had a good time and now they're up 1-0 and this was now a situation where if you are the gorillas you're going into search and destroy where it hasn't been your friend all year long yeah, the only bit of good news, I would say, for the side of really both teams is like LAG has been really one dimensional in their map selection. So they have a little bit of favor getting the high rise, which we assume they wanted. But like you said, shoes on the other foot when it comes to talking about Minnesota and their search and destroy has not been essentially great. But the one time they have played high rise, they were six and two on it. Yep. I think the thing about it is, you know, hey, for Minnesota, the good news is you were able to get not just great participation from Vivid, but your ARs are getting a lot more active. Look at the hard point time here for accuracy and awakening by the end of the game it was a little bit of a slower start but minnesota able to turn things up and get their ars more active which is something that we will kind of echo as we eventually head into the search and destroy as well and i think i think that's the perfect thing that we have to focus on going into the search and destroy because there's one guy in specific that usually is a menace on the map and when we were listening to the desk break it down i know it breaks nameless's heart whenever he has to talk about big weight giga weight not in the best shape. He's usually one of those guys that takes over the game. He has that takeover ability, but so far this season, he's been kind of below the pack. Pretty sure he's bottom five in hard point, KD. Not really the best in search and destroy, but he has the ability to be that guy to change the game for this team. So with them getting that early map one victory, it's something that they've been able to do all season. That now puts them five and one in opening hard points. You just have to be able to chain it into a search and destroy. And since they just played this versus Carolina, they won 6-2. Yep. They dominated in every aspect of that game. Game. Oh, yeah, we best believe we're going to throw this in the series as map number two to potentially go up 2-0. Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect segue there, Sunny, because it felt like there was a light bulb moment that kind of came through while playing Carolina last week. And to be fair, you know, their opening four games included matches versus Optic and included matches versus New York. But finding you 3-0 versus Carolina, maybe that's like the extra step they need just to build a little bit more confidence of, hey, we are doing the right things or we are making the right adjustments to get ourselves more competitive and following up with a dominant map number one. I'm sure those things have to be extra enforced. The big question will be, can you actually turn up when it matters most? In particular, whether you're talking Minnesota, whether you're talking LAG, the search and destroy has been kind of the vulnerability for both these two squads to this point. This is the time where things have to start clicking before we head into a major. Yeah, they definitely have to start clicking now. And I think the biggest thing that Minnesota need to focus on is them getting the first blood and actually winning the round. Because Big. they do a good job of getting the first kill. But the conversion rate after that is like 11th in the league. You're in a 4v3 situation. Let's just play our man of advantages. Let's just play trades properly and walk away with these rounds. And then the opposite side for LAG, it's been their defensive side. They allow the bomb plant to go down 50% of the time in their attacking rounds. And they only have a 20% chance at retaking the site, which is dead last in the league. So if you're the team on defense in the gorillas let's just not let the bomb go down we cannot retake it so let's just make it a little bit easier for us yeah you make it sound so simple <laughs> but i think the <laughs> thing is like as we look at a map like high rise how much focus do you put onto the ars in particular because i think that's one of the things if, if you can lock down the lanes let your smgs kind of float run circles around a couple of the key areas that makes life easier when it comes to setting up your initial defense which to be fair both teams have not been particularly stellar at
I just think on a map like high rise though when you say about cutting off these lanes there's so many different lanes on a map like high rise because you have the underground you have the outskirts you have so many different angles that you can attack so these ARs are going to put themselves in positions to hold down these long line of sights but then when those sights get overwhelmed by nades by stuns you're now forced to reposition and that mm. little split second of a timing allows those smgs to now maneuver around the map due to the attack usage so even if they do uh, are holding down a certain lane if they get back down from that spot you cannot allow the timing to go the opposite team because that's what LAG were had been able to capitalize on it last week was that fame was always finding the timing he was always making stuff happen and if you allow that guy to start roaming what did he go on a 10 streak on Karachi yep. SMD last week yep. oh yeah you have to make sure you slow that guy down and shut down his timings and that's going to be Lynz on the opposite side and Vivid who had a great performance in map number one to slow him down yeah, I think the Lens and Vivid conversations, I think, is where I'm really taking the focus, which, you know, I think on one side of it, it's easy to kind of look at both the SMG duos and then the AR duos on both of our squads and find of pick pros and cons, maybe more pros for the SMGs, more cons for the ARs. But I think just seeing Vivid step up like he did in map number one, not rely just on one or the other SMG to do it, but they're kind of working in tandem with one another. That I think has to be kind of another big key towards what could be a difference maker in a search to destroy that. Just to reiterate it, we don't really particularly give favor to one team or the other. There really isn't enough data or results to really say convincingly that, oh yeah, LAG has played this map a lot. It favors oh, yeah. them. Yeah, but at the same right minnesota did look really good at it last week versus carolina so it feels like a little bit of a coin flip yeah we're just in the beginning of the season man these guys only play these these couple of maps a handful of times but it's not really the best so when we get to the end of the year it obviously turn up but you see these stats for both of these ar players on one side you got a world champion 0.58 for assault kills per round 0.4 that's not good and then the opposite yep. side big wake he's not been having the season and everyone is expecting him to 0.55 in search and destroy both of these ARs know exactly what they need to do and it all starts by just simply winning one of those one-on-one -on -one gunfights to start it all off so you can win that percentage gunfight you see it it's a little bit better for awakening 54.5 percent compared to 25 percent from assault but on a map like high rise those ARs need to be felt early yeah, the opening dual win percentage, I think, is going to be really, really important to know. I think for Assault, he's 25%. It's two and six in particular. But you look to those other teammates, that's where a lot of the kind of weight has been shifted is over to Fame and over to Diamond Con to take these opening engagements. They tally the highest on their team and they yeah. win 62 to 73% of their opening duels. So maybe if it's just one of those things for Assault, like, hey, just stay alive in the, in the first 30 seconds and then we've got ourselves a chance to actually convert some of these uh, man favored rounds that you were kind of talking about before. And if you're Fame in a situation like, a guy who really just had the best series he possibly could last week. Yeah. Remember, like, when this team was formed and they were playing a couple matches, Fame wasn't really having the best showing. But then that last match is exactly the reason why he deserves to be in this position because he has that takeover ability. This guy know what it's like to play multiple roles. SMG, AR, it does not matter. So he's comfortable in a majority of these situations. And that's what makes him good at finding those opening first two kills. I think yep. Assault and Estrio and other guys who are around a .5 in those opening dual percentages, you cannot have that. Let's send Fame out there. Go ahead, bud. Go get that first blood. Let's go into 4v3. Yeah, I, I like that call a lot. And it's just really interesting when you look at like the history of fame, you know, I was really kind of blinded by his ability when he was running kind of just a main SMG back in Challengers. Yeah. He, he had this call out that he was talking to us about where he would tell his teammates, I'm blacking out. And that just means he's <laughs> going to go and just completely lose track of the map and just go run and kill things. And when he was able to do that, he was one of the best players in Challengers without question. When he got picked up last year, though, it was like, hey, Fame, we need to run a second AR. Don't even bother picking up a sub. And like, it didn't really <laughs> open him up to be able to do the same kind of things. But it definitely feels like now in this year, Modern Warfare 3, LAG are fully understanding that, yeah, this guy is an X Factor. We got to let him do what he wants to at different moments in time. But yeah. enough of the podcast about the pre-setup. Let's get into it. High Rise, Search and Destroy. Big map here for LAG trying to tie the series up at one. Yeah, they need to tie the series up at one, man. They need to come out swinging into Search and Destroy. This is one of the only two Search and Destroy maps they have played on the season. This and Karachi. So, they know exactly what's going on. Is there going to be the team on the attack early on? First blood already in from Diamond Con. Beams them actually across the map. So, already in the man advantage. Yep, and that's again, just keep an eye on that AR opening dual percentage. It's been really not a shining star for Minnesota in any form. Fame, top of the helicopter. Does see Vivid for a moment, but... Nades actually push him off, so it avoids the gunfight a little while longer. And it looks like LAG are saying, hey, we know exactly where Vivid's playing from. Let's see if we can get a harder look here at A. Funny. 
Never mind. As Fame still thought that he was at the propane. He was probably yeah. jaw dropped the fact that Vivid was standing on top of the propane. It blows up and he still does not die. Eventually walks away with the kill, makes it a 3v3, but Lens gets the info that the pressure's gonna be over towards B. He's able to reposition himself, use a smoke grenade to get out, but now the B site is gonna be free for LSG to potentially work this bomb plan. Good follow up here from Astrial damage towards Lens. They eventually track him down through the self smoke. Vivid up top would have to scout everything out. Catches a couple of calf muscles of Diamond Con, but does not see assault from behind him. Last player left is Big Way. 1v3 situation plus a defuse required for it. And he is in a world of hurt, has no idea if Diamond Con has pushed through. He's not sure where the exit from Astral 100% is, and there's still the worry of Assault from behind. Yep, and eventually gets Assault him. strikes. <laughs> eventually Assault strikes to lead to Gorillas taking the first round. Diamond Con starts it off with the beams across the map to shut down accuracy. And then they just slowly work their way up towards the B-bomb, get the info, find the kill onto Lin Su's bottom mid. And once it turns into a 3v2, you work towards that bomb plant, you get it down, cast the player towards top Pele, and then awaken it in 1v3. Just too much to check as the Gorillas walk away with the attacking round to start us off. But now they go to the defensive side where they tend to struggle a bit. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, this just something to watch out for. Both of these two teams, on high res in particular, rank in the top three and converting rounds after first blood. So we may just be able to just call the first blood battle, and that might be the end of the round. See if that continues to be the case. Stuns over towards Linz's direction, does scout him out, but... No worse for wear. And for LAG, it just kind of holds your ground. No need to do anything too overambitious. Yeah, they have this setup. They have Estriel on the top of the generators and towards the B site. Diamond Con in a nice little spot. Just watching this B street eventually decides to pop up. Forces awakening to change his positioning a little bit, but it's already 30 seconds wiped off the clock. Minnesota, they're trying to get information from Top Heli, trying to see how they're properly set up, but so far LAG are giving them enough. I mean, we got a game of tag going on over here yeah. towards Elevator Alley, and eventually Vivid is able to support, so Diamond Con this time falls for First Blood. Wake will go up top towards Propane. The rest of LAG still lowly playing around B. Fame, for a moment, you thought may have been scouted out, but no, Linz actually still drops, so Fame's position safe. Trade comes through, time running out. Bomb being planted. Estrial down low, able to catch one. Bomb will extend the clock into the 2v2 we go. Into the 2v2, and accuracy, his position is now known. Can he win this gunfight? No, he cannot. Assault takes him down. So now it's all up, up to Vivid. The guy who got the bomb down. With the reposition and working his way all the way through back heli. If he could take down Assault and just play his life, he might be able to get just enough to win this round. Catches him off the banister. First shots are good. Now the 1v1 with Estriel. And Vivid will just bounce back over. 18 seconds on the clock. Here comes the challenge. And oh, oh, oh Estriel getting the first couple of the shots, but doesn't matter. Vivid just slides over and converts the 1v2, getting Minnesota another round on the board. Yeah, that was just a good round right there. Good adjustments right there out of Vivid. Put that bomb down. He knows it's a 1v2. Assault just got a kill over towards Helipad Steps. So we're going to wrap our way back towards the backside. Find that first kill. Check the bomb and then realize that Estriel isn't on it. But once that smoke gets invested, we got to check the bomb. And he wins that up close to personal gunfight with that MCW to walk away with the round. Minnesota tie it up at one. Very back and forth affair to this point. Opening first bloods again have determined our round outcomes to this point as well. Nades over the top. Minnesota getting aggressive through Elevator Alley. Three man stack here. Nades across the map just to try to get some more defensive influence over towards A. And I think Vivid did see Estriel playing closer towards this A bomb. He yeah, definitely saw him, but Estriel swats him as well. So he's going to try to get out with his life. But no, the nade comes in and finally the propane take down a player. So Minnesota back-to-back -back rounds with the first blood. Vivid looking for the second, and he finds it onto Assault. Spots another one in the back of the base. It's now 2v4. Diamond Con, your position known. Minnesota have all map control now. Only player they have not seen yet is Fame. Hanging out over towards the offensive green hut. And Vivid did take a couple extra shots. Stuns will push him off the angle, and yep, Minnesota will say, no need to do anything crazy. Let's just take our 4v2, 35 seconds on the clock. Vivid eventually able to tally on a Diamond Con. That, I think, puts him maybe one away from streaks as well here. Fame figured out, dealt with. Vivid looking for the final kill. Doesn't quite finish off the last shot needed to take care of Fame. He's trying to but, get it. Yeah, they're absolutely trying to give, give it to cruise. him. Give they're me the cruise. They're trying to give it no to him. No shoot at him. I got it. I got it. <laughs> wow. I had a ranked teammate yesterday who said, hey, I've got five. Let me get this final kill. And I was like, all right, do you do you. Seem to be the five. similar call there. Hey, what's the rank, Alan? What's was, the rank right now? It's not good, dude. Let's let's not put me on blast on broadcast. All right, let's just all right. let's just say we're having a good time playing.
No, we just got to grind, man. You know, you hand up on my <laughs> team. You hit my, you be my little hill kitten, and we'll be, we'll be good. I'll get you up I to got goal, you. no problem. I got you. But Vivis shuts down the round right there. He earned himself a cruise missile, finds three kills on the round to shut it down, and on the back of the first blood again by Rocker. Now put themselves up to one with the cruise missile now being able to work with. Now you're going to force the players on LAG to play it nice and slow in the back of their base because that cruise missile is going to be able to take you down wherever you go. You don't have that this. drone. Love this call here from Vivid, just watching to see if he can catch him when crossing through the windows. Bomb leaning over towards Blue Alley, maybe thinking about getting over towards A. A lot of the nades over the top, though, may have caused some concern in trying to read if any defenders had actually fully crossed over, and there's a bit of a pause here with 60 seconds on the clock. Yeah, but the good thing is when you're sitting in the back of the middle and you watch that cross, you're at least able to spot the back window, so he at least gets the information that only one player is on the right side, everyone else has to be on the left, either underground or playing around this B site, and that eventually leads to Dominic Khan finding the first blood, but information now gained. Lin is there for the trade, 3v3. Yeah, huge for Lin's to get one and get away. Trades went back and forth on both sides. So 2v3 bombs still in hand here for Linz and the Rocker as well, it like they wanted to rotate over towards A, but no entry point whatsoever. So again, first blood determines the outcome of the round and we stay in a back and forth game of tug of war. Yeah, that was just a good setup right there from the Gorillas though. Got three players over towards the B side. Dominic Khan being watched over on that B lane. He finds the first blood and then even though the trade comes in, accuracy tries to be the island player to sneak his way out through blue. He eventually gets taken down, and he put LAG in the man advantage. They trade efficiently to walk away with the round tied up at two. And they secure a defense right there. It's already yep. adjustments made out of the Gorillas to tie it up. It's just interesting to see how both teams have kind of preferred leaning one side or the other defensively with these setups. LAG have really over-invested over towards this B alley. This time, a little bit more neutral, just kind of watching over the middle of the map first, and then there will be a bit of a break off over to the interior at A. Estrell over a bit, trying to nade towards Elevator Alley. He doesn't connect with anything there, but Diamond Con at least gets a little bit more forward space to work with as LAG continue to kind of pick apart the map little by little. Mm -hmm. They're slowly working their way up B Street. They know that no one's watching this lane. They can work up through the elevator side. Just got to check top helipad and eventually at least the fame finding the first bullet onto Lin. So now B is going to be in full control of the Gorillas. They have everything set up. Let's just get this bomb down. Place to at least see players cross in towards the site. Does get tagged, has to back away. Still a good look though over the top of the bomb site. Estriel not committing for a plant as of yet. Finally makes his move. Shots are decent. Is there a toe hanging out? Sure <laughs> is. Okay, 3v3. Bomb now down, confirmed at B. Minnesota still the onus towards them to try to still reclaim the site though with 28 on the clock. Yes, time is starting to dwindle down. Someone has to commit towards this bomb, and now you're allowing Vivid. The remaining time to slowly work up on this late flank. You're going to have Assault that's going to be in position to potentially watch it. Can he find the timing on the kill? Vivid's going to be able to line them up. 3v2, and now they have them trapped in sight. Completely trapped. Fame down low. Diamond Con up top. First shot's good for DC. Also sneaks away towards the scaffolding in the same breath. Fame takes down accuracy in the lower side. So Vivid, who's done it all so far for Rocker, would have to do it again. 1v2 situation. First one free. Little spin off the top. Oh. No! Not going to work out. Quick reaction allows LAG to confirm the kill. And with that, also the round. Oh, he read the play beautifully. I thought he put himself in a great position, but fortunately the movement right there from Domicon just too strong. Even better hip fire to close out the round right there for the Gorillas. They start off again with the first blood. They take control of the site, even with the bomb getting down. When Vivid wins that gunfight, the other two players, they just won those one-on-ones, and that makes it impossible. Vivid tried his best. He now puts himself at 9-3. and three. Still has that cruise missile to work with. But LLG take control again. Yeah, huge out of Vivid for two maps in a row. Still down, though, overall in Awakening. Still looking for his first kill. I mean, you think back to the years of Call of Duty that Awakening has been in the Pro League. It's always been Awakening getting double-digit kills that feels like in yep. Search and Destroy maps. That has not been the case so far in Modern Warfare 3. That would need to change, you would think, for Minnesota to find favor here in this map number two. Yeah, Dona is definitely not what you want to have. Nope. Not in this situation. So we definitely have to turn that around and visit said. It's time to invest this cruise missile. Let's get this info. But unfortunately, the trophy is going to block it. So now they know exactly what the setup is for their gorillas. But do they decide to change that a little bit? Ashiro basically thinks that he's trapped in towards Ooh. the elevators, but he gets the timing to get out. And now he's in that B site with Lindsay working his way up the ladder to try to get him B. Minnesota seemed pretty confident that they knew that Estriel got out of elevator. Linz didn't even look that direction in any form. Fame just running around over through Blue Alley eventually clears out the helicopter steps. Estriel down low, hoping for a gunfight. 
something to get this defense a little bit more favor, but it's Fame still just finessing his life. Two kills for him in the round as the bomb gets planted, and it's all going to fall to Awakening. This would be a heck of a time to start putting together a couple of the kills. He's gotten one so far in this round. Estriel down low, goes unscouted, and LAG. Couple rounds now in a row, find themselves up 4 2. Yeah, Awakening just, his information was known. It was all gained. He just got a kill, so they said, ah, let's just trap him towards top rope pain. Everyone hold a different angle. We're going to be able to walk away with the round, but on the back of Fame, finding another first blood. They get that bomb down. They trade efficiently, and then in the 1v3, Awakening stands no chance, and they also withstand that cruise missile. So that's already a great round yeah. for the Gorillas. Three rounds in a row. Get the cruise missile invested. Now this ACD is basically yours. Back on the attack, they go. I mean, back keep finding defense. first bloods. Yeah, let's keep finding first bloods at this point. See if that continues to be the case. Fame nades over the top over towards B. The rest of his team just kind of floating at the moment through the windows. Eventually looking to make their move over towards B Alley, which again, this is that same triple stack that we saw earlier for Minnesota. Just kind of locking things up and around elevator. Lynn's taking an extra step forward, maybe wanting to get aggressive and push extra steps if he can, pending what is the rest of his ARC behind him. Yeah, he's just in a great position, though, to not allow anything to happen at P because that A-bomb is very difficult to get a plant down. So as long as you hold down this B street, basically have everything cut off that you need to. Accuracy is going to be with his hands full, though, on the opposite side of the map as well. He's trying to get information. If anyone's trying to put the pressure through blue, now this is time where Estrue is going to be able to strike. He works his way into B, gets the info. Now he's able to get out. Will there be any adjustment here from LAG trying to isolate these players? Backside elevator and over towards propane. Estriel off the regen, looking to re-engage. Vivid still seen in the corner. And eventually it's Fame who actually connects at long range onto Awakening. That is a 1v1 through Elevator Alley. Accuracy taking down Fame over towards the opposite side. Little follow-up, oh. Vivid! Oh, perfect timing! Able to line up two. Leaves Diamond Con by himself. First trade is free. Does he know that Lens is nearby though? Doesn't seem to. And Minnesota Rocker able to take us back to a one-round deficit. Man, what a play by Vivid right there. Just in the perfect position at the perfect time. Two players try to work their way up through underground. He finds two, and then even though he does get traded, it's only 15 seconds left. And Linz lines it up to win the round for Minnesota. Staying alive a little bit longer. Now down 3-4. On the attacking side. I would like to see a pace change right here from Rocket. I was just about to say... Gorillas have been able to just dominate this B street. Yep. They slowly start to pick you guys apart. Time starts to dwindle, and eventually when you have to make a play, there's just no play to be made because they have everything cut off. So let's just be a little bit faster on this run if we can. Yeah, Vivid's going to confirm that one player has crossed over. Lin should know that there's a threat nearby. And here is that tempo change. Lin's already super far forward, and Fame has absolutely no idea. First one cuts down to pieces. Vivid following on the second, and oh, it's just absolutely perfect. Oh, holy cow, there's the tempo change. Jay, you freaking profit. We needed that. That's exactly what they needed. They said, listen, we are not messing with these guys over towards B. Like, Estru is jumping on top of the generator. There's, there's so many things that these guys are doing right on that side of the map. Let's switch it up. Let's go to the bomb that's a lot more difficult. And Linz was able to start it off by just putting himself in that position out in the propane. Gets the first blood. I don't know where Vivid got the final two piece. He had to have been top heli, but eventually Linz finds the final. So two quick rounds in a row for Minnesota to tie the game back, back at four. What an absolute beautiful piece of timing to flip the switch as well. I mean, I don't want to say it's been like a slow game of chess to this point, but it really has been first bloods at long range. And finally, we have a bit of a narrative change. So what can we see this round in a tie 4-4 game? Will there be new patterns that start to develop late into the search and destroy? Famous already got up mid alley and has a good crossing angle towards B. Ah, uh, but the problem is Vivid <laughs> sees the top of his hair. No worries for the easy kill. Vivid up to 15 and 5. No end in sight for the young man. And he gets another information. At least the information on the Diamond Con, but the shots are not good enough to find the kill. DC makes it a 3v3, but Linz is going to be instantly here for the trade. 3v2. Advantage Minnesota. And they know that Astro is just waiting to climb this ladder. So Linz is going to take his time in towards his B side. Oh! But Estrell doesn't take the ladder. Instead, pops down low and actually has a look for a moment at Linz, who forfeits the gunfight. And eventually, it's accuracy to kind of help give cover towards Linz. Now a 1v2 for Estriel. A huge round number nine. And long range accuracy. Not going to miss a bullet. Minnesota taking advantage going into our 10th round. That's three rounds in a row, man. Yes, sir. His adjustments so far. Two on the defensive side, one on the attack, but just simply stepping up in the pace. But 
It all starts on the first blood again, Alan. What a great angle right there from Vivid to find that kill onto Fame. Fame was trying to set up a crossfire with Diamond Khan, but once you take him down, they're going to slow down on their attacking rounds. DC eventually does get traded as well. Accuracy wins the island gunfight across the map. The Nashry with that SMG in hand is not going to win that gunfight. Versus a name like Accuracy. Yep. Shoots like that. Minnesota now at game point. And what do you call here if you're LAG? Three rounds lost in a row. Over to a defense that you just got bashed over at A. And they're just going to pretty much forfeit it. Fame will give a, at least a line of sight over towards the A cross. But largely speaking, LAG are fully invested onto this B defense. Again, this is their go-to. We shut down this B street. We should be able to cut off everything else. We just don't want to get first blooded. Fame is going to be that player on the back of the base. A couple of shots going down from accuracy. He's going to be able to get out with his life. But you see all of Rocker. They are not working this left side. They know they are stacked on this side of the map. Salt getting tagged. Vivid focused Ooh. on the trophy system. And in that moment, Diamond Con Chows finds first blood. Linz trying if he possibly could to isolate for the trade, but won't be able to. And Diamond Con will punish again. Linz up to five in a row, though. Backs off his elimination to at least retrieve the bomb. And all I'll tell you, how big could a late cruise missile be if he can earn it? It's all down the winds, though. Got it's it. the first. There's the cruise, but it may not make much of a difference as he will not be able to do much more in the round. LAG will get us to around 11, but the extra resource has been earned. That cruise missile can play dividend in this round 11. Good job from Lin, so at least find that one kill. He knew the round was basically going to be chalked. 1v3 on a map like High Rise. Neither one of these sites is easy to get the bomb down, especially if you're not finding any kills at the right time. But into the round 11 we go. Rocker with the cruise missile. Really curious who was able to outslay who. I'm thinking with Vivid having 15. Not many else. Not many other kills from the rest of the squad. It's got to be LAG on the defensive side. No, it's actually going to be Minnesota. So this is perfect. This is yeah, absolutely yeah. perfect if you are Minnesota. You invest your attacks over towards that B site. If they start putting the bomb down, calling that cruise. No trophy systems are in there we saw for a moment. For LAG, they can't even go outside this back office area. If I read the stats correctly, no one was over 70% way of earning up that field upgrade. So this is so impactful. Everyone just, no one wants to move. <laughs> it's just, Linz will eventually call this out. This will get a lay of the land, but LNG haven't given them any information because they can't go outside their back base yet. They haven't given up anything, and with that cruise missile now getting invested, you get the information. You allow Minnesota now take more map control, get out of their base, and know where the pressure's coming in from. You have accuracy on the helipad steps, potentially watching the crossover towards B, but Estrio's checking everything. He never even gets this bomb down for free. First blood traded back immediately. Assault tagged up in towards elevator, but Estriel gets the plant and sneaks away. Trying to bait out shots as Assault is on the regen. Estriel now completely resetting. Accuracy just hoping, praying he gets this 1v1 with Assault, which eventually he does. Two kills good for Minnesota. Just down to Estriel. Would be a 1v3. Smokes himself. Feeling like he has to check the bomb. No one home yet. There's the double chell. The stun ah, completely locks him into place. He's stuck in molasses. And the round 11, good for Minnesota. What a bounce back. Four of what, five rounds they win essentially in a row? Unreal composure for Rocker. That's some serious ice, man. With the ice man on your roster, Minnesota Rocker. Walk away with the circ destroy. Go up 2-0 in this series. And what a play call right there out of Rocker. Just everyone just take our time. No one drop. No one get first blooded. Because this SD was all about the first bloods. No one drops right off the rip. You force LAG to now reposition himself once that cruise missile gets invested. You gotta back up. If you don't have a cruise missile, if you don't have a trophy system, you are going to get first blooded with that missile in the air. But with the repositioning out of Rocker, even with the bomb going down, trades go back and forth. Accuracy in his position just basically called game because he knows exactly where Assault was, trapped in towards the elevator. He knew exactly where Estrid was, at least jumped mm -hmm. down towards underground. So he had all the information when it was a 3v3 to put his team in the advantage to walk away with the game. Rocker just ice up. Now they're up 2-1. 15 and 8 from David, nearly 3,500 damage. 3,500 damage? Yes, Is he playing sir. a hot point? Oh my god! He was god. everywhere, brother. He was everywhere. Wow. Two cruise missiles from Minnesota. Could have been the big difference maker here in map number two. A tight one, but the scoreboard leaning that lovely shade of purple. I guess both teams have a lovely shade of yeah. purple in their logos. But for Minnesota, things looking super positive that maybe the break and the reset they needed from the first two weeks into these last two was what the doctor ordered because my goodness, they're looking clean, Jay.
That's that's clean, man. Clean hard point. Not as clean search of the stroke, but you ice up to walk away with a 6-5, and now you are going into a Karachi control where both teams are complete opposites of each other. One's good on defense, one's good on offense. So it's going to be yep. another square up in the map three. It's going to be a good one. Plus, we also have a skid row hard point where both teams have had some electricity moments over the course yeah. of the last couple of weeks. So it's going to be a tall ask, I would say, first and foremost for LAG to start to put together a reverse sweep. But a Karachi control is a bit of a playground for them that we've seen in the past. Can they provide and extend this series to at least get to four? Again, for LAG, this could be a series win that confirms the upper bracket, whereas for Minnesota, a 3-0 would go a long way towards potential tiebreakers that they can close out with dubs see how things go we'll be back with the karachi control right after this
Don't miss out on all the action at the first Call of Duty League Major, hosted by the Boston Breach, this January 25th to the 28th at the MGM Music Hall at Fenway in Boston. Scan the QR code on the screen or go to callofdutyleague.com for more info. The Painted Alabrije Bundle is available now in the Call of Duty store. Inspired by the folk art of Oaxaca, this stunning bundle offers colorful, vibrant, and mythical items you gotta check out. friends family we're ready to go for map number three or just about currently minnesota rocket what can nice with it 2-0 up on lag i'm shift that study and i think the biggest point here is vivid is back and looking mighty fine at this point study that guy's going crazy man map number one he was <laughs> the guy who really set the tone 19 non-traded kills and he thought he couldn't top it in map number two but goes 15 and 8 3,500 damage. Like, he basically just played two back-to-back -back hard points. That's how good he's playing. And now that leads to Minnesota Rocker being up 2-0 in full control of this series. No pun intended. Now we're going into control. And that's the big thing here is, well, for Minnesota and LAG, haven't particularly been bad in any form, I would say, but Karachi's been an interesting one because you framed it up that each other's pros are the other team's cons. Good attacking stuff coming out of LAG where the defensive uh, items out of Rocker have been clean. So as we start things off with those sides, it will be an initial attempt towards a ultimately pushed back by Minnesota to start. They're yeah, already a great start for Minnesota. They find all the kills. Now they hit the reset button if you are the gorillas, and you basically have them trapped. You have Awakening already pushed out towards Junk, so you know the pressure's not coming over towards that B point. It's all pressure over towards the chicken coop side. Accuracy and Linz are cutting them down one by one. Accuracy from top three is able to find two. LAG have not been able to find anything yet. Finally, Diamond Khan finds one. Could potentially be the thing to get him out. Trying to work this through coop side, though, and accuracy top third could be tough to do. Come here. Gets them with the little left-right punch combo. So with that, LAG now control the left side of the map, looking to make their way on to stop this clock. 30 seconds is where it will stall out, and Minnesota off the respawn, looking to mostly hit this through mid-alley. Yeah, they don't want to contest towards chicken side because they know they could potentially be a player towards bridge, a player towards top AC. Let's just try to fight it through middle, and that might come back to bite them as Estriu finds three, and he's instantly putting pressure on towards B. He does get cut down, but that's just enough to basically call A theirs. They're going to be able to extend this time. Minnesota might want to go for this one again. Yeah, a little more focus towards hotel here for Minnesota. The second ticket progress will get locked in, and like you mentioned, no real concerned effort towards trying to re-attack over towards this A zone. Maybe a chance to find some kills off exit, though. They've been pulling over towards red. Does get caught. Disastrial. Lighten them up. And now a hit starts to make its way over towards the Minnesota spawn for LAG. And now they have Junkyard control to it. You also have Estrio potentially put himself in a spawn trap positioning. They always spawn towards the back left side of Cafe. He's trying to find the time to at least find one. He does so, but... The rest of his teammates don't find anything on the opposite side. Already, that's going to be 30 seconds wiped off of the clock. Fame in a position to at least open up a lane, but Vivid is still going to be the cutoff man. Only a minute left, and Minnesota still holding on. Yeah, LA looked a little bit surprised that Minnesota were putting so much forward aggression through Hotel in towards Junk. Estriel once again, though, off his respawn. I mean, he's lighting it up. 8 and 4 eventually traded out, but he's the one creating a lot of issues here for Minnesota's defense at this point. It's giving his team a chance to try to find these breaks, but just as soon as he finds the kill, no one's following up for LAG. Diamond Con only able to get one, and Rocker will hold a marginal life lead as Estriel again gets to work opening the front doors. This is just a straight tunnel push. We're going to hit Junk every single time, and we're going to be able to win a couple gunfights, and that's going to be able to be able to put them in a position to stop this B point. All of Minnesota now, a little bit scattered around the map. You have Vivid going on a flank. He wins that one-on-one. -on -one. Awakening finds a second uh. with those two kills. That might be just enough to slow down this push or eventually shut this one down. 
Nine seconds, 7v7. Awakening able to see that DC and Assault have moved over towards the back alley. Oh, and he's waiting for him perfectly. Now down to two seconds. Last player left alive was Assault. He will not be able to stand inside the zone. So how about it? It looked like for a moment their LAG behind Estriel's just pure individual efforts should have been able to break things through, but no one else was really able there to follow up. Yeah, no one else was in a position to find a kill after Estrio find that three piece. And then when Estrio tries to push that towards the B point, he instantly does get cut down. I think it was just great reinforcements from Minnesota every time. They knew where the pressure was coming in towards red side. We just have to trade. As long as we don't lose these gunfights, we're going to be in a position to win this round. And they did a great job of doing so. Vivid was the first guy to start it off. He slides in, gets one, yep. finds a second. And then you have a player in accuracy who goes on a late flank to eventually spawn these guys a little bit deeper. So Minnesota, they struggled under defense early on, but they take defense in round number one. And Rocker, like we said, have not been particularly great on their offense. We'll head over to a Rocker listening to see if they can find success here at A. I just fell asleep. Pinch. He's going up mid. Nothing on the left. He's going up mid on you, Joe. That's all me. All me. All me. Guys. Nothing on the left. There's two on point. Just keep going up. I'm going to stop. 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 I'm going to Right, oh my god, they're set up, they're set up, get this cap. Yep. Right, he was on the secret in the hole, he can shot you. In the hole? Yeah, yeah, he was in the hole. He's trying to fight for me. Right, two red stairs, two red stairs, one in the hut, and one's in our spawn. Yeah, it's all done, it's all done. He's still missing the secret thing, so. I'm looking for a secret. I'm trying to hit this guy, Joe. I'm in the car. I'm in the car. I'm in the car. I don't see him anymore, I tell us. I need him, I need him, I'm running this guy. I can't see him, I'm in the car. No, he's mid cut, mid cut. He's not dead. Mid cut, diamond cut. There's a guy right there, there was a guy top red. I'm going to cross right now. I'm coming to top AC then, bro. Double watch the cross. He can be male on the show. Cross Adam. I have top AC, guys. Lots of success there from Rocker over A. They've got a ton of time, even still, to work with. 16.14, minute 8 on the clock, and Linz has found a way to open up things to get into Diner here if he wants to. Yeah, this is where it gets a little scary, because if you are the Gorillas, you have multiple players going on flank routes, and if Rocker able to pick this up, they're basically going to be able to close out this round, but... Two kills already in favor of the Gorillas. Linz now the sole man over towards his B point. Information now gained. He at least finds one. But now how long can you play your life to allow your teammates to get back to you before you make a play happen? Oh, I like that little jump up though from Linz. He actually forces Diamond Con to spawn all the way down towards the SD street. And a chance for him with help over the middle of the map. He could just kind of go prone and stop the clock if they need to here. Lin's just finessing for forever. The problem is, kind of like what Estra was doing on the offense for the side of LAG. No one else from Minnesota yeah. is finding a way to help him out. So now Lin's by himself. Diamond Con over the top, able to get some tags. And there's just not enough assistance, it feels like, here for Rocker. Lin's has to commit his life. And as he does, he essentially forfeits his own life, leaving Vivid now by himself. 8v9. Gunfights need to be won from the front here. Rocker need help. Yeah, Rocker need help desperately because it's only been one player on this side of the map the whole time, but Vivid finds one, Accuracy finds a second. They can chain a couple kills together, go. they can still win this round. That's now three dead in a row. You're forcing all of LAG to either hit through Soda Alley or jump over the dumpster. And Liz is in a perfect position to pinch him. He's gonna be able to find one. He's gonna be able to find two. No, he's not. Assault takes him down, but the second tick is in. They still could have a chance. 5v3. LAG have to go through Dumpster Alley. Vivid off the regen. Looking to pick up a part. Oh my god. First one. Now with Diamond Con. Last oh. one left and the kill comes through. So Rocker will take the offense by elimination, but the extra tick did get added. So huge advantages in tick progression as well if this eventually goes five. Yeah, at least you get that. But you might not want it if you are Rocker because you know that defense hasn't treated you kindly all season. But they almost make that happen. In those final moments, 
They won a couple gunfights out of red. I, you saw both SMG players. When they were on that B point, the other two AR players, they were basically stuck in their base. They could not get yeah. out. But finally, when they were able to get out, you see it get a little bit mixy towards the very end. Wait, Minnesota won the round? Yeah, what they about got kills? kills? Yeah, they got oh my kills. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 5v3 at the end, last kill. So now LAG have a lot to do here to get this thing back. Estriel just picking up where he left off from that last off. It's good first blood win. Fame staying safe on the zone. Assault watching over the top of them. That should be good for the first tick of progress, but Minnesota have full high ground control. So the lock is in for the first tick, but you've got rocket members swarming all around you. And I'm sure Fame is just saying, help, help, help me, help me. I need some assistance, please. He needs some help. And finally, Estriel takes down Vivian from top three. So now you're living nicely in towards his eight points. Second segment is already complete. Diamond Cod knows we have to take our time on this positioning. This one player is definitely going to be playing for him. And he finds that kill as well. So A is about to be done and dusted. They're going to have two minutes and 20 seconds. Yeah. To try to complete over towards B. But it all starts by taking over towards junk control. You have to take down Vivian. Three life advantage. Lots of time. No need to do anything desperate in any form. Vivian, it's stunned up. Still finds the first kill. Fame trying to follow up with a double of his own. Trying to, again, regain some opening control here at Hotel. This time, likely to work with Diamond Con. Estriel kind of floating around through mid-map. He's continuing to be a thorn in the side of the rocker. As now LAG finally have at least some concentrative setup if they want to actually give this a go for a break from the front. Yeah, they're just going to wait, though. That opening kill is everything, and Assault finds the first. Now they're slowly... They're not even going to attempt to go into a ticket. They don't want to check multiple corners when they're working their way on that side of the map. But Vivid cuts down one. Still Minnesota reinforcing on the right side of the map. Estriel on a five screen, but they find two. They find three. This might be go. the opportunity. That's all four dead. The stack needs to be in. Trophy down. Stack it up. Two trophies down. Why not? Put them in the same spot if you do, Mayor. And for LAG, they don't want to go through Dumpster Alley, so they're going to take the scenic route back through mid. Vivid and Awakening hitting through topside red. Lynn's trying to get through Soda Alley. First couple of kills good for Rocker on this retake attempt. We talked about LAG's inability to hold setups, and once again, they get completely oh. foiled. Third tick of progress only gets the halfway and accuracy makes sure that's fully depleted. Now you're forced to hit that reset button, but at least they get the close junk spawns. You have to win this next set of gunfights again, and Estria starts it off with the first. It's all trying to team fight. Everyone conga line and right in through the ticket. And Lens is in the perfect position to make something happen. Oh, look at the overhead here. Just picking apart the setup. Yeah, just nowhere to go for LAG. Life deficit now just cut down to one. Map positioning all favoring that of the rocker. Vivid on the cross. Able to at least get a couple of tags in. Nades coming his way. Awakening right through mid just to make sure there's no quick cut over towards the red hotel. And it looks like that'll be enough for LAG to kind of take what they were given and try to use it as a way to manipulate the map back into their favor. Yeah, we have to figure out another way. We can't go junk yep. side because that takes a lot of time. We have to now overextend, find an opening through the back end. And Liz is in a perfect position to at least cut a couple off, but he only takes down one. You find a couple kills through the back end, you can potentially put them in a spawn trap as your teammates win the cross fight, gun fights across the map. The only player that can make something happen is Vivid. What can he do for Minnesota? He's got to do it all, and he's not able to do anything. It's Estriel again. He's at 27 and 16. Mercy. And there's the stack for LAG. No worries here as they confirm the third tick of progress. But Estriel is on literal fire right now. 27, and they're down 0-2. That guy's like a walking two-piece, Alan. Like, it's Maybe walking three-piece. Even <laughs> long distance, this guy's making it happen. 28 and 16. 4,700 damage. At least of the gorillas finally getting around on the board. And it was an attack, so now they're going back on defense. And we saw the way that Minnesota were able to do it last time. It was just simply off of kills. You got to try to put them in the bit, put them in the trap, push out towards jump, force them to spawn chicken coop, force them to overextend to make your life a little bit easier. Estriel still carrying a force spree in towards this next round as well. Nades up the top, not even going to connect in. Oh, hold on a second. Vivid is already pushed pretty far forward towards top side right. Actually slides out. He could watch this cross, but look at LAG's defensive play. They're trying to go all the way around the back, but Minnesota has sniffed this out. Fame will drop. First tick of progress, going to get locked. Follow-up kills perfect for Rocker. Estriel, last one standing. He's got nothing to work with, and you've got Vivid already on rotation. Yeah, the whole team is off rotation. All right, A is easy to get done. Let's just hop on B, help me over on this side of the map, and that's exactly what Awakening is going to do. One player trying to go over the dumpster hop. It's going to be Estriel. He wins an insane gunfight. Finds a second with a nade and single-handedly shuts down that B push. Now you're forcing Rocker. 
complete this A point. Gamikon gonna try to contest it, but not enough. Gotta be time extended by a minute. Minnesota currently up by three lives. I mean, every time LAG have their backs up against the wall, Astral just comes out swinging to give his team a chance. So now the map positioning all favoring the defense moving forward, but Vivid just runs right out with no cause for concern whatsoever. He gets himself too. Rocker not fully able to follow up on the eliminations. Lin's last one standing. He'll catch one in the cross, but really can't make any moves over towards B as Rocker still continue to come off spawn. That's a big kill though to take down Fame. Forward up through junk. You still have Lin's roaming around the back of the base, and now Fame off spawn knows that he has to play slow. He cannot allow this guy to go for a pinch and potentially break our setup, but not even Lin's. It's vivid right through Soda Alley. Guns both of them off the back alley. Awakening finds a third, and last player is Fame. And can he find a couple kills that allows his teammates to jump over this dumpster? Then he gets popped, just trying to play off this pinch. Rewraps all the way down, gets caught over. Oh! Upside red! Second ticket progress, gonna get locked. Vivid starting to light things up on four. The whole team of Rockers starting the streak. Oh! 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 Trying to, try to break through, Domicon gets two. Can anyone else touch in time? It has to come through Dumpster, and it will not be able to happen. 3-0 the series. Everyone coming up wrong in predictions as Rocker, calm, cool, collected, sweep LAG, and keep the upper bracket hopes alive. Oh, Minnesota with the perfect break at the end, Allen. I just take right there for LAG. It was just way too tight of a setup. You let one player sneak on by. If he find a two pieces all broken down, and that was vivid through Soda Alley. Two headshots off of that half wall, half wall with that SMG in hand starts it all off. And once you spawn them out towards the back alley, once you force them to start jumping over this dumpster, all you have to do is trade efficiently, stay down on the point, and the game is going to be yours. Minnesota Rocker only had one win on the season, and that was last week versus Carolina. Come in today and get another 3-0 versus the Gorillas to keep their winners' brackets hope alive at the Boston Major, man. What a series from them.